Hello, welcome to the Mike Magistrelli Show. I'm David Meyer. Today we're going to talk about the previous game versus Missouri Baptist, discuss some of the season with senior linebacker Liam Kelly, and then go over the next opponent, St. Xavier. But first, Coach, how are you doing? Doing great, David. Thank you. Uh, can you go over some of the keys to the win versus Missouri Baptist? Yeah, it was a, it was a great football game, an exciting Saturday for the Bees. And, uh, you know, we knew we had a good football team and uh, Missouri Baptist coming in and, and a very dangerous team that played a number of uh, really close games throughout the year. And, and uh, you know, it was real excited to see our guys get off to a great start. I thought we came into the game with the right mindset, uh, got a stop right away defensively, um, forced them to punt, and were able to have a pretty long uh, initial drive to uh, – Go up seven nothing. I thought that was a great lift for our guys to get off to a to a great start in the football game. All right. Well, let's get right into the, some highlights. Obviously, it was a you know it was a beautiful day. Um, you know, kind of had some questionable weather during the course of the week, but uh, you know couldn't ask for a better day. About 55 degrees there on on Saturday. Beautiful uh, you know afternoon game at Brady Street. Um, here you'll see early on. Again, defense getting a uh, getting a stop here on the on the first possession. Uh, um, in fact, I think it's a little bit further ahead here, but uh, you kind of see a, a you know pretty good run there by Missouri Baptist. Um, you know, kind of getting off to a, a bit of a, a start for them with a kind of a long uh, rushing attack, and then obviously uh, you know a nail advice snap there, which uh, ends up giving us the ball here. And um, you see John unfortunately get uh, get sacked here. Um, you know, early in the football game, we're aided by a by a face mask penalty uh, that kind of helped us the initial portion of the drive here to. Uh, to, to kind of keep the chains moving there with a couple penalties on uh, Missouri Baptist. Here you see a nice pass to uh, Yemi Ward on the perimeter. Uh, really good uh, you know, run after the catch there by Yemi as well. Um, I, I thought we had a good mix, um, you know, kind of running pass on the first drive and uh, you know, Garrett Tark's there with a, a good run up the middle and uh, you know, anytime we can uh, you know, run the ball success again. It helps the passing game and vice versa. And you kind of see us go, you know, back and forth between the rushing and the and the passing attack here. Yeah, absolutely. Just I love the balance you guys have offensively. Yeah, we've gotten you know last couple of weeks gotten in a good rhythm, um, you know, offensively to where we're able to mix things up and and uh, you know not quite be so predictable where it's uh, you know run on first and second down and throw on third and long. So being able to mix things up has been a big key for us here. You see an outstanding catch in the. In the back corner of the end zone there by Blake Whitman, uh, you know, real good pass there by uh, you know John Beckendorf to find Blake and uh, again get off to a seven uh, seven zero start early was was huge for us. Yeah, absolutely. The the momentum you guys had early was great. Yeah, hey, you know, and again get get another stop here and uh, we've done a really good job with our special teams uh, kind of throughout the year, different phases of our our kicking game to where um, that's the second punt we blocked this year and, and uh, had an opportunity there to not only block it, but uh, recover in great field position, giving our offense the ball there. Uh, I think we took over maybe the 19 yard line. So again, down the red zone and you see if it's uh, kind of, you know, mixing things up and get all the way down here, I believe down to the one yard line and kind of set up a fourth down and, and, a, and fourth down we called a, a bootleg where John gets on the perimeter, has, a, has an option of a run or a, or a pass play. And obviously you see him kind of uh, you know, pump the pass and then tuck it and get to the corner of the end zone. And uh, it was a nice score there to, again, go up 14 to nothing at this point. Absolutely. Ed, in the game, we saw a couple times you guys get uh, a, let, a screen pass go through. Yeah, you know, anytime you're a, you're a team that likes to get after the quarterback, rush the quarterback like we do, um, you know, screen passes are one of the things teams are going to try to do against you to slow down that rush. And I thought Missouri Baptist had a couple of real nice screens set up. Uh, one was there earlier, and then uh, I believe they run one later in the football game. And, um, you know, it's something we have to be conscious of defensively and, and uh, you know, work hard to, uh, to defend. But even so, uh, we, we see this free play here. I love how John Beckner really takes that shot. Yeah, you know, we, we've worked on that this year. Uh, you know, when guys jump, being able to know we have a free play and, and uh, be able to take a shot when the opportunity, pro, you know, presents itself. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we were able to convert there on, on the play, but then ultimately ended up, uh, you know, getting a sack here, uh, which, which unfortunately for us stalled the drive. Absolutely, and I, th I love how you guys have, despite this play there, have really shut down teams' running attack. Well, that's where it starts for us defensively. Uh, you know, we take a lot of pride in defending the run, and, and uh, you know, we, we face a number of teams that like to run the football. So obviously, uh, you know, just like Missouri Baptist likes to run it, and we knew that was a big, uh, 
you know, big key coming into the football game. I thought we did a pretty good job of, uh, you know, slowing the rushing attack. And, and any time you can do that, you, you force them to have to throw to beat you. And, and uh, you know, at that point, uh, um, you know, a little, you force them to be one-dimensional, I guess. Uh, what was the key on this interception here? Wow, this is, this was to me was probably the play of the game. Um, you know, it was 14 and nothing at this time. Uh, you know, right before the uh, right before the halftime there, and you know, it looked like they maybe have have an opportunity to put some points on the board and go into halftime with some momentum. And, and fortunately for us, Zach Elbert steps in front, and makes a great interception, and uh, you know we go into the half up 14 to nothing as opposed to 14-7 or 14-3, whatever it might have been. So I thought we did a great job throughout the day. Anytime. Missouri Baptist got a little momentum going. We were able to find a way to take the momentum back. And uh, you know, saw the, the last play here, the, which was the first play of the second half, come out and, and hit Blake Whitman up over the top. I thought that was a great start to the second half. Again, kind of recapturing the momentum. And uh, you know, we uh, kind of went with, a, with an up-tempo, uh, quick-paced offense here the first drive of the second half. And you know, I was really proud of the guys the way, again, we methodically went down the field and scored here. Yeah, the up-tempo worked really well. I, I like how energized everyone was, and it results in a touchdown. Well, it, it, it's something our offensive guys take a lot of pride in. Um, you know, we had, we had talked about at halftime that we had not utilized it at all in the first half, and that we, we would utilize it more in the second half, and then the guys get really excited about that because they see the effectiveness it has, uh, you know, not only allowing us to uh, get into a rhythm, but uh, the confusion and, and the uh, frustration and, and just the, the tiredness that it causes the defense. Yeah, we saw in the previous play another uh, screen pass net, great pass there. Uh, yeah, Missouri Baptist, they've got some, some really good football players, uh, some, some very dangerous football players, and you saw a number of guys uh, you know, on their end be able to step up and make some, make some plays. Uh, you know, again, you've got to limit those the best you can, but uh, you know, they're certainly a good football team too. Absolutely. I, I love how you guys address your really getting to the ball at the point of the catch. Yeah, and then that, that's, that's a sign of a great defense, uh, you, your pursuit. It's, it's something we work uh, you know, pretty much on a daily basis. Our, our defense does pursuit drill, uh, tackle circuits, all those type of things. Uh, the more hats you get to the football, the better defense you're going to play. And again, that's something we uh, you know, really take a lot of pride in defensively. Uh, the turnover there doesn't hurt you too much. It was already fourth down. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you, know, you never want to turn over the football. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately for us, there's kind of a sack, uh, a fumble there. Um, you know, we've done a pretty good job this year of uh, winning the turnover battle, and that was our only turnover Saturday. In fact, our only turnover the last couple weeks now. So uh, we've done a better job of that, and that, that's, uh, again, a huge, huge key for us. Speaking of turnovers, it was a great pick six here. Uh, yeah, Vin Vincent Shaw uh, just did a tremendous job kind of stepping in front there, um, obviously making the play, the interception, and then uh, you know, a lot of green, green space in front of him. Did a great job. Uh, you know, we're turning it for a touchdown again. We talk about answering, um, you know, their momentum. Um, they were driving, obviously getting down towards the red zone there, and then Vincent steps in front, picks it off, and and, and obviously a pick six the other way. We kick off to them. Very next, very next play, uh, Jackson Nelson steps in front and intercepts a pass, and again gives us the ball here, down here uh, one more time yet in the uh, in the red zone. Yeah, uh, you guys were really efficient in the red zone. Can you talk about that? Well, it's something we've worked a lot on, especially the last couple of weeks in terms of, uh, we felt like we had had opportunities earlier in the season in the red zone and didn't always capitalize. And, uh, you know, one of the big one of the big things you always try and do is, is finish with touchdowns. And unfortunately here we have to settle for a field goal, um, you know, after a sack and a penalty. Um, you know, it was a little disappointing to end uh, with a field goal attempt, but uh, you know, Tom Gillen did a nice job of uh, making the kick. and. And obviously, you uh, you know convert that uh, turnover into at least three points there. Yeah, I really we haven't seen a lot of Ray Boye, but I love the kind of shiftiness and elusiveness he has. Yeah, he, he's a good football player. Uh, you know, Ray's a guy that I think in in a lot of teams would uh, you know be getting more opportunities, more carries. Uh, he's a guy that uh, you know every time he gets an opportunity, he seems to make the most of it, and, and it's something I think you know moving forward he'll just get more and more opportunities, but. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a great uh, football player, great team player. He's, he's very well respected by his teammates, and uh, guys are always excited when he does get an opportunity. And uh, uh, we've talked about turnovers a lot today. Another uh, takeaway, the defense was fantastic. Yeah, they, they were. Um, we've done a great job of, of taking away the football um, you know, all year long, and, and like I mentioned earlier, done a pretty good job hanging on the football offensively. So. In terms of turnover margin, uh, we've, we've done a pretty good job this year. That's always uh, 
you know, goal we talk about every week is not only winning the turnover margin in a game, but, uh, you know, to, to win it by two. That's always our goal. Um, and, and so even if we don't turn over the football offensively, it means defense, we got to create at least two turnovers and, and that type of stuff. So again, that's a, that's a major point of emphasis for us. And I think we've done a really good job of that throughout the year. Absolutely. And again, getting to the catch early, super important. Yeah, uh, receiver Michael Malone, uh, number three here, is an outstanding football player. He's actually a guy that uh, you know played plays both ways. He played cornerback and, and played receiver. You don't see that a lot anymore in college football, and uh, you know it's a special athlete that can do that, and, and certainly showed his uh, his abilities as both a receiver and a defensive back during the day. Absolutely, uh, I this off onside kick was just a fantastic recovery. It really was. Uh, you know, we had our hands team in, kind of expecting that, hey, there's, not, there's a chance they may onside this. And, uh, you know, you see them line up and you think, okay, here it comes. And it was a great job by uh, uh, KY, we call him. Uh, you know, did a nice job of, uh, you know, fielding the football. That's never an easy thing to do when, uh, when you know there's, uh, you know, 10 other guys running down to, to, to get you. And, and he did a great job of that. Absolutely. Another Ray Boye run. and. Here we'll see Trent Nunn punch it in for the touchdown. Yeah, we at this point in the game we had a lot of uh, you know, kind of second string guys in. It was great to see those guys have success. Uh, we did a nice drive, uh, nice job here driving the football down. And, and again, you mentioned Ray kind of setting it up for uh, Trent Nunn to take it in from one yard out, and just a you know great way to, to, to finish off a good win for us. Yeah, I, it was a pleasure to watch that win. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, what? How did you you? Previously in the season, you guys have struggled a little offensively. How did you kind of turn that around here? Yeah, I, th I think you go back to, uh, you know, probably halftime of the, of the Trinity game, and, and we really started uh, from that point forward to throw the ball with much more efficiency. And I think that's a, a big key for us. Uh, you know, early in the season, uh, you know, we struggled with a lot of consistency in, in the passing game, and that kind of hampered us offensively. Again, I thought, you know, it, it, at Trinity, um, you know, the first half we threw a couple touchdowns, but we, again, we weren't real efficient in doing it. Uh, you know, we, we were, I believe we were 4 or 14 or something like that at halftime. Um, you know, come back out the second half again, started using a little tempo and things like that to get into a better rhythm. And I think John was 6 of 8 in the second half for a couple touchdowns against Trinity and then obviously, uh, you know, another really good football game uh, Saturday. So we're starting to click. We're starting to get the, uh, the combination of the passing game going with the running game. And again, that's something we envisioned going into this year just took us a little bit to get there. Uh, we saw you guys pull ahead by a lot and then John Beckendorf come out. Um, you know, it was probably time for some second string guys, but it looked like maybe he was a little injured. <laughs> yeah, John, John's a competitor. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's a guy that, uh, you know, missed a couple weeks ago a game against Olivet with a uh, ankle injury and, uh, you know, he'd been tackled a couple times and was a little bit yimpy. And, and so when we got up there, just wanted to make sure that we got him through the game healthy and, and obviously took him out. Uh, but we also have a lot, of, a lot of confidence in the other guys as well. You know, uh, quarterback Aaron Koosman, Dec Declan McDonald, and then uh, freshman Tom Casey came in and, and finished up as well. So played a number of different guys, and it's great to give those guys the opportunity to let them get in there and get some experience and, and, uh, and have some success as well. All right. Uh, thank you, Coach. We're going to take a break and be right back with senior linebacker Liam Kelly on the Mike Magistrelli Show. I love the culture here at St. Ambrose. It, it means family to me. I think it's, uh, it's, it's that personal touch you don't receive at a, a larger institution and just the values that St. Ambrose has.
KALA 88.5 FM, the radio station with the most diversity in the Quad City region. Jazz, blues, R&B, hip-hop, Spanish and Hispanic programming, gospel, new rock, oldies, news, and shows addressing local community issues, and the world's best in entertainment and news from Public Radio International. Here's something different on KALA 88.5 FM, the most diverse radio station in the Quad City region. Welcome back to the Mike Magistrelli Show. Uh, I'm David Meyer, and here we have senior linebacker Liam Kelly. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Pretty, pretty good. Uh, so let's talk about uh, how good your defense has been. What are some of the keys for the team as a whole defensively? Uh, yeah, we, we play really good defense um, every week, and it starts in practice. Um, our defensive coordinator, Coach Phillip, uh, he does a great job preaching, um, getting like 11 hats to the ball and playing hard and physical every play. Um, he always says, like, you don't have to be the one to make the play. Just do your job and let the other, let the other guys around you make the play, and uh, your play will come. So I think we go out every week and we play with that mentality, and it, uh, it works really well for us. Yeah, you guys as a group have done really well. Uh, specifically, what were some of the like, takeaways from this past game at Missouri Baptist? Uh, we went into the game knowing that they had a really good uh, rushing attack. Um, that was their, that was their go-to. They like to run the ball. So uh, the first thing we had to do was stop that. And uh, they actually came out throwing the ball more than we thought. So, um, you know, it might have caught us off guard a little bit, but I think we recovered pretty quick. Um, and from there, it was just uh, playing our defense, you know, shutting down their running back. And once we did that, it kind of all just fell into place. Yeah, we saw uh, a lot of takeaways. We talked about that. Uh, what did your defense do to uh, make those takeaways happen? Um, you know, it goes back to practice again. We do, every week, we do at least one day of practice where we do a turnover circuit. Um, just 10 minutes of working on, you know, stripping the ball, getting interceptions, um, taking it back to the end zone. So uh, we do that in practice. And then I think when it comes to the game, it just becomes kind of second nature. You know, we're used to getting turnovers. Um, in my four years here, we've been, that's something that our defense has been really good at. So I think it's just kind of something that we're used to. Uh, how much pride do you take in your defense being one of the better ones in the league? Uh, we take a lot of pride in it. Um, but, you know, it's, it all goes back to our, like our work ethic and practice um, in the weight room and stuff. Uh, we've worked really hard to be this good. Um, you know, Coach Phillip, he does a great job in practice getting us ready for the games. And, uh, you know, we all just work really hard and we work really well together. So I think that that's how we've got it done. Absolutely. You guys have done a great job this season. Uh, how can you keep doing well? Um, I think we can just, you know, keep doing what we're doing. And then, uh, you know, we got three more games on the schedule, um, three really good teams. So I think if we just go into those weeks and, uh, you know, we watch a ton of film, we know what they're going to do and we prepare for it. And then we go into the game and execute that stuff. I think we'll be all right. Uh, what are some of the keys defensively for the upcoming game? Um, once again, they have it's a team with a really good rushing attack. I think their running back is fifth in the in the conference or fifth in the country in rushing yards. So uh, you know we we need to shut him down from the start. Um, they got a couple other good players on offense. So, um, but I think if we shut down their running back and uh, and we don't let him hurt us, I think we'll be we'll be in good shape for the game. All right, thanks, Liam. Uh, next, we'll be catching back up with Coach to talk about the upcoming St. Xavier game, coming up next on the Mike Magistrelli Show. It was like the ejection seat for my life. You know, it was a place where I wasn't sure where I was going after high school, and this popped up, and uh, after a few colleges, it just all of a sudden, it just melded right. And I just kept, every year, kept getting better and better. You know, I just felt, I felt at home here. We're more than a radio station. We're your neighbors, investing time in our community. We're mentors guiding the next generation of broadcasters. We're supporters of veterans. 
partners with social service agencies, and investigators of history. We're dedicated sports fans. We're committed to the stories that make the Quad Cities unique. We are KALA Radio, 88.5 FM, 106.1 FM. Turn it on, turn it up. Hello, and welcome back to the Mike Magistrelli Show. Uh, we're going to be talking with Coach about the upcoming St. Xavier game. Uh, they're ranked pretty high in the conference. Uh, what, are, what is your mindset going into those games against tough opponents? Well, uh, St. Xavier's, uh, you know, an outstanding team. Like you mentioned, you know, highly nationally ranked. Um, you know, they've, uh, they've won the conference championship, I believe, three years in a row now. It's, it's been uh, uh, several years since they've lost a conference game. So an outstanding opponent. And, uh, you know, for us, uh, uh, St. Xavier week is always kind of a special week. Um, it's a little different than, than every other week, in, in my opinion, in that uh, you know, we, we have a number of guys from the Chicagoland area in our, in our program, and, and oftentimes uh, they know guys from the St. Xavier team and played against them in high school, sometimes teammates even, and things like that. So it's always a neat rivalry that way. And then uh, you know, both coaching staffs have, have been at each school for a number of years now and really get to know each other and kind of uh, ha have a great, um, you know, uh, competitive rivalry, but a lot of respect between the two programs as well. What are some of the things your team needs to do to win against St. Xavier? Well, like Liam said, they've uh, you know they got an outstanding running back, um, a guy that uh, you know really at any time can can take the ball the distance, and, and it's one of those backs that you, you know you might shut him down you know a few plays in a row, and all of a sudden boom, he's going to pop one and, and go the distance on you. So um, you know that'll be a will be a certainly a big key for us limiting him in, in the running attack. They use him as a as a receiver quite often, kick returner, as many, many ways as they can get the ball in his hands, they're good. They're going to find a way to do so. And so knowing where he is at all times, knowing, knowing how to, to kind of slow him down a little bit will be a, a big, big key for us. Uh, what about offensively? What are you guys focused on there? Yeah, again, keeping that momentum we've had the last couple of weeks. You know, again, we talked about the balance in, in terms of uh, rushing and, and throwing the football and, and some of those type of things. Uh, we need to keep that going. Uh, St. Xavier's a very good defensive team. They'll give you, you know, some multiple front looks and, and uh, you know, really do a great job of playing fast and, and pursuing the football really well and those type of things that, that just jump out to you when you watch them on film. So, um, you know, it'll be important for us to, again, similar to the Missouri Baptist week, get off to a good start and, and uh, you know, ideally get a lead early in the football game and uh, you know, force them to maybe to play catch up. Uh, is this not the best question, but is John Beckendorf ready to go? <laughs> he, John, John's fine. John, uh, again, he's a, a tremendous competitor, and uh, you know, he's he's a guy that uh, you know is going to lay it on the line every week, and oftentimes come out of the game, you know, a little bit bumped and bruised. But uh, you know, he, he's perfectly fine and be ready to play. All right. Uh, and Tom Gillen at the your kicker at the end missed a couple kicks. Do you think he'll be? back in shape yeah john john actually uh or tom excuse me actually had a had a great season up until that point um you know i think he had made every every extra point field goal up to that point um you know i think he uh you know kicked into the wind a couple times late in the game and i and uh you know the the, the first miss he had was real questionable i think it pretty much went over top of the upright and was kind of uh you know up left up to the the uh, official's decision whether it was good or not and and uh you know, i think he might have let that one affect him then on the next kick and things like that so uh you know guys have a lot of confidence in tom he's done a great job uh not only the extra point field goal but also kicking off for us and and uh and he'll be just fine all right uh what is the number one thing if you could just focus on one thing you need to do against saint xavier um you know the thing i i, I expressed to the guys that I think St. Xavier's done a great job of this year is just finding a way to win. Um, you know, they've had some, some close football games. Uh, you know, they've had some games where, uh, you know, they got up big and, and, and the team closed the gap at the end and they'd find a way to, to finish it off. They had other games where, hey, they were behind until the last drive and then they make a nice drive to, to secure the win. So um, I think we need to match that. We need to find a way on our end uh, to, to finish the football game, find a way to win regardless of the situation, whatever we find ourselves in finding a way to, to win the football game. I think it's a sign of a, of a great team. And again, you know, St. Xavier's done that this year. And, uh, you know, we got to find a way to do the exact same thing. All right. Thanks, Coach. Uh, and that's all we have for now. Uh, make sure to tune in next week to the Mike Magistrelli Show.